Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are looking at a new release of Unity. Specifically, Unity 2019.3 Beta has just been released. They released an alpha a number of weeks back, but the beta is now officially here. Now, once again, this is not something you should be using in production, but I will admit I like a lot of the things that are in this release. So first off, we're going to jump right in and take a look at what is new. And there's a couple things here. First off, I'm releasing this video as 4K for one big reason, and one of the major updates here is for new HDPI support. So if you You've got a high definition monitor such as a 4k monitor I'm recording this on you should find the experience is much nicer and there's a couple of things that they've tweaked in this particular release that I again enjoy now there's going to be polarizing this kind of stuff always is but what they've done is they've swapped out the font they've swapped out the icons so now this is more crisp to read and more high dpi or scaling friendly so if you look at this really closely you'll see here is 2019.3 the new set of icons and the new font, whereas here is 2019.2. And it just looks a little bit muddier. Um, it doesn't scale quite as well. And those things. Now, you can probably see it a little bit better in this graphic, which is zoomed in. And you can see new versus old and the one spot. And I have to say, across the board, I like the new approach much better. On top of that, uh, there is good HTTPI scaling in here. You can configure that via edit. Um, go into your uh, preferences. And then you've got UI scaling. You can set it to either use your default, like I've got here, this is a 250% scaling on my 15 inch display, or you can turn that off and then set it however you wish. Unfortunately, you do need to restart to actually demonstrate, and I am not going to restart this. So you got an idea of how you can control HDPI support anyways. So that is nice to see. I do like the new UI. It's definitely an improvement. And one of the other changes they've made here, you can also see it down here in the fonts, in the, the definition, in the folders even, I think. Let me just do a direct comparison. Yep, those are definitely new icons using a flat style instead of this 3D embossed look. And I find across the board, I do like the new approach they've taken. But I'll be curious to hear what you think of the new UI versus the old UI in the comments down below. Now, another thing that changed in this particular release is a rebranding. And I'm not so sure I'd like this one. Um, they've renamed in 2019.3, the lightweight render pipeline is now known as the universal render pipeline. And really, that's it. It's just a rebranding. So it's no longer called lightweight render pipeline. You now have the uh, universal render pipeline and the high def render pipeline, which you would use for ray tracing and so on. So this is more for your uh, mobile, lower performance devices, etc. kind of profile. So instead of being called lightweight, it's called universal render pipeline. I'm not sure where I feel on that particular change, but um, I, I, who cares? It's rebranding. On top of that, we've also gotten more changes in the package manager. And the, the way that they're modularizing Unity, this package manager is becoming more and more important pretty much every single day. And they've made a couple changes here that I like. One that I really like, actually, is now if you come into all packages, you can actually go in now and select my assets. And what this will show you is da, 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 your assets, things that you have downloaded from the store, and you can import them and manage them here directly in the package manager. This is definitely an improvement I like. Another thing that they've done here is if you go into the plus icon here, you can now add a package directly from Git using a URL. So when they're releasing these experimental features out on Git or someone open sources for their own stuff, it is easier to get it and manage it now directly within the package manager. So you're having to use this stuff more and more and more, but I do like the fact that they have fully integrated in the uh, package manager that they've got that ability to pull in from Git and that your assets are now included. The stuff that you've downloaded from the store are all in here. This is a big improvement and I definitely like that. Now, on top of this, we have a new package in here and I'll demonstrate that before I'll go back and look, take a look at the release notes. So we see here, uh, head on down to I, you will now find, oh, apparently I'm not on experimental. So let's show preview packages, important thing there. So let's go down here. Under the I section, you will found, now found there is a new input system. We're going to go ahead and install this into our project, like so. Bum, 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 bum. Give it a second. It's not that big, so this shouldn't actually take too long, but we shall wait um, and wait and wait. So this is a new input system that has been added. It allows you to sort of handle all of your input controls in a single place. We'll see this very quickly in action. There's also an API that goes along with it. If you're interested in learning more, uh, these documentation links actually work. So click here for view the documentation. The quick get started guide shows you a little bit about the programming side of things and how to go ahead and use the component. I'm just gonna show you the component side of things in just a second. Uh, data instances back end for the new input system are not enabled in the player settings. Do you want to enable the back end? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, so we'll give this a second. 
Hopefully this just works. Now that is the downside to the new package system is it is very easy to break your game. So I'm gonna grab something in the scene here. We're going to add a component to it and it should be input. Uh, input, which one are you? One second. Is it player input? At that input component, I'm not sure 100% of the name. No, it's not player input. Give me one second here. No, nope, it appears I was right. Now here I am actually in the documentation, by the way. So it shows you what you're looking for. You want to add a player input component. And that's what we did. So let's head on back over here. So we have it. And then what I wanted to do, so here's where I screwed up. I thought the interface was one up. So here you go here, create actions. And the cool thing here is, yeah, okay. Go ahead and save that one. And now what you see here is you can actually map. Let me just expand it. Oh, you can't. Why can't I, re oh, there we go, resize. So what we can do is map out components to, it, it's sort of like creating aliases for different things. So it allows you to have uh, multiple controls contain to fire off the same action. This is very common, uh, Godot does this. I think Unreal Engine does this. So you see here, you've got your WASD control. So your W um, is doing uh, this. So the binding is the W on the keyboard, composite part is up, but you'll notice here in the up arrow, you're binding the up arrow on the keyboard and it's gonna fire off up. So what you're actually gonna be handling off is the composite part. And so what you're seeing here is you can control um, multiple sets of controls. So here's the left stick and you're gonna see it's gonna fire off to, let me see if I can't find, oh, I can't actually find that. Um, you've got various different settings that can all fire off to the same particular name. So instead of having to deal with the up arrow and the uh, W key being pressed, you just handle the up action. And so that's what this new input action system allows you to do. You can create control schemes. So you got one there for the player, and then you've got one there for controlling the UI. And then there is a code side that goes along with all of this. It creates it so you can create your, um, you can abstract the actual keys from the UI code in action. And I do like that improvement. So let's take a quick look at the actual Unity blog post. So I'll just switch on back over and we'll look at some of the other stuff that is in the 2019.3 beta. So again, I already showed you the new updates, the new icons, etc. in the, um, the release. Now you do notice that they're actually showing the dark theme that's only in the pro version. I know that's going to annoy some people. Uh, we got faster iterations when you hit the play mode. So you hit play mode, it does less. So it actually creates it. So you play even faster and you have in the editor enter play mode options there some of the feeds be back there. Asset database version two, we, they replaced asset database version one pipeline with version two. This brings asset de dependency tracking and many other improvements that lay the foundation of a more reliable performant and scalable pipeline. Uh, we've got addressable assets for teams producing complex live content. This release includes a new scriptable build pipeline, which gives you an easy way to load assets by address while also handling asset management um, overhead by simplifying content pack creation and deployment. Uh, serialized reference and polymorphic data. Uh, we've got some physics updates, including the physics library going from 3.4 to 4.1. Uh, yeah, I get a bit more detail. I'm not gonna get that into the weeds. We saw this already. So the new packager and manager improvements, including the ability to get things from the Git UI, uh, the, sorry, via Git URL, and the ability to get your assets directly in the package manager, which is nice. Uh, animation rigging improvement. You can now preview your animation rigging and keyframes in timeline for faster iteration and to take advantage of timeline tools. Uh, train updates. They've actually done a lot of love into the train system over the last couple of releases, which is kind of funny because for the first 10 years, there was literally nobody, no team working on this stuff. So we're getting massive improvements. One of the cool new improvements that they've got is the ability to actually cut holes in your train and then uh, programmatic things for actually hooking into them. So if you needed to create a cave or a custom underground train system, it's one of the downsides to using height maps is height maps can't overlap. So if you want to cut holes into something and have particular, um, again, uh, cave systems and that kind of stuff. That functionality is now there, including the code side of things to go along with it. Uh, particle system C sharp job support is now possible to manipulate particle data using the C sharp job system without having to copy the data between a script and native code. It includes support for burst compiler and jobs dependencies. Uh, graphic updates, again, they rename the lightweight render pipeline into the universal render pipeline. I don't know why, I don't care really. Uh, let me know if that if that bothers you in any way. Uh, we've completely revamped pro pro post-processing for the, the, the newly renamed Universal Pipeline. It is now indicated directly into the pipeline, bringing greater performance. Features in Universal Post-Process include anti-aliasing, depth of field, camera motion blur, panini projection, bloom, lens distortion, chromatic aberration, color grading, tone mapping, vignette, vignette sorry, uh, film grain, and 8-bit dithering. Uh, we also like post a bit of that up. Uh, ray tracing and HDRP improvements. 
uh, lighting updates. Now this is one of those things that are moving away from their existing light mapping solution. So you're seeing a lot of improvements here across the board, including uh, performance to the uh, progressive light mapper improvements. Uh, we've also got new denoiser, which is funny because now we have uh, AMD Pro light map denoiser. You can see the effect of it right here. So at this point in time, we now have a denoiser from, I believe, Intel, NVIDIA, and AMD all supported. And I think maybe a third party as well. Uh, the new input system, we checked that out. It'll, again, it allows you to do that abstraction between the actual keys and the action that is fired when the keys are hit. Um, universally runtime, uh, Unity runtime library support. This is actually kind of neat. Is you can make take advantage of Unity functionality in your native application. So if you want to hook into things like the 3D or 2D real-time renderer, uh, maybe into the audio side of things, you can now kind of use Unity as a library for your code. Uh, we've got on-demand rendering. Uh, service updates, remote config, that ba ba ba, and you can now win a GTX RTX 2080. I think you got to tweet something, yeah, if you want to win it. And that is it. That is what is new in this particular beta. Again, I really, yeah, let's just go back to the source. I really like the new UI. I, I, I think it's crisp and clean, but I know, again, this is going to be polarizing. Let me know what you think of this move. Uh, do you like the way they've gone with the UI, or do you hate the way that you've gone with the UI, or do you not care in the slightest? I got a feeling some people won't like these icon changes. We'll probably prefer the old system like this, uh, but I do find the font that they, they've changed the font they use as their primary font. I do find this new one slightly more readable, slightly less muddy than the old version, and the icon it just seems to be like that that flat design seems to be in vogue these days. Blender did it. Uh, a couple other people have done it. And now Unity have done it. But they do scale nicely across devices. So that is definitely one of the, the strengths of doing that as opposed to a traditional um, bitmap style icon. I don't know what my opinion is there. But on the whole, I do like the UI update. I'm curious to hear what you think of it. So this is uh, Unity 2019.3. Again, don't use it in production. But if you want to check it out, it is available on the Unity Hub for download. Um, let me know what you think. Comments down below. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.